like let's say that somehow the fighting ceased tomorrow like they're like i mean this is a dreamland but let's say that the fighting ceased tomorrow like they did a ceasefire and people were brought to the table what do you think a good solution is do you think two state do you think one state like what, what's in your opinion what do you think a, a better solution would be moving forward so here this is the issue that i have right now okay i've, I've stated this once mm -hmm. i'll state it again my audience is gonna bored because i've heard this before okay my issue is right now i think both sides are trying the same tactics but one side is living in delusion israel and palestine both right. believe that if they continue violent action it's going to benefit them israel's right palestine's wrong i think palestine has spent mm -hmm. the past 75 years basically being encouraged by every other country to fight 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 to take back the lands of israel and slowly all of those other countries have kind of backed away realizing like ah eh, this shit is we don't care anymore. And now Palestine has found itself increasingly radicalized because before they might have enjoyed broad support from a broad host of Arab nations. OK, they might have had support from people like Saudi Arabia, from people like Egypt, even from people up in Iraq and in Syria and in all of these different countries. Now, Palestinians have only really gotten support from the Houthis and from Hezbollah. And really, we we're just talking about Iran, right? Which is not that's not if, if you find yourself in a corner fighting and the only guy next to you is Iran, you're. Okay, some bad shit has happened at this point. So they've lost their support, not even like internationally, but like in the Arab League, they've kind of lost their support there. Their prospects are dwindling because with every new terror attack, with every new bilateral treaty that Israel signs, their partners are, are leaving them. They, their negotiating position weakens. So when you ask me, like, what is the best solution? I would say the best solution right now is to negotiate a good two-state solution with as much contiguous land as you can. So doing via land swaps or whatever else with Palestinians in the West Bank. And I think that is a show of good faith. I think Israel should be prepared to demolish, okay, at least some of the settlements of the West Bank, okay? We don't need all these stupid Jewish fucking enclaves. Uh, you know, keep the Hebron one or whatever the you were like you feel like you need but like demolish some of them keep the ones near the green line or whatever and then do land swaps for some good land with the palestinians and then be done with it okay whatever headaches you have uh losing some land okay to palestinians you're gonna feel way better when you're past this stupid fucking issue and and now israel can like join the world stage as a real country that's not constantly in turmoil over this dumb shit. that's what i think should happen but i don't think I don't think Israel wants to right now because they want to see Hamas completely gone and the right is super emboldened after these attacks. Like, look, we told you Palestinians are crazy. And I don't think Palestinians want to because now the whole world, all these lefties, no offense, and everybody around the world is like, Palestinians, fight, 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 river to sea, river to sea. They're like, yeah, we're fighting and while they're dying. And it's like, okay. And mm -hmm. everybody like cheering from yeah. the sidelines. So, yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, yeah, it's definitely not offensive. Like, I, I don't think that, like, my opinion on the matter is popular by any means. And I don't really, like... I mean, dude, at the end of the day, honestly, it's like I have like no hope for most of society. So it's like really hard for me to like, like, do I think that the Palestinians have any fighting chance? No, especially when I mean, the the weight of uh, each nation's like capabilities is so off, you know what I mean? But I don't see how a two state solution could ever end in quote unquote peace. You know, because it's like, um, I, unless unless under that circumstance, Israel's going to allow uh, the people of Gaza and the West Bank to like travel and to not and have control over their resources and stuff like I mean, that, I right? Think like, that, I think do that you. Sorry, go ahead. I think that Israel would be willing to do that. Like, obviously, the security arrangement initially is going to be pretty one sided. Israel's not going to want them to have a real standing army. They can have a police force, no air force, probably. Right. And I think that um, they're going to want some like I think I think Camp David was three radar installations in the uh, place and they want a connection to like the Jordanian border. I, I think a highway there. Um, but they said they would build like an over highway from the Gaza Strip connecting the West Bank. I think that if the Palestinian people there were just allowed to like prosper, like focus on actually building your economy and not just building f rockets all day uh, and focus on educating your people and not just watching, you know, Sesame Street goes to, you know, Auschwitz or whatever. I, I think that the proximity to Israel would be helpful for them, right? The work permits and everything in the Gaza Strip are helpful. Like people could go into Israel, people could work. Israel will be just like the United States with Mexico. They want cheap labor. They'll bring them in. They'll work. They'll make money. Like ideally, in a maybe this is my libertarian brain coming out here, okay? But if if you're if you're literally surrounded by Israel and then you're like building your economy, you're doing everything. I feel like that can be only beneficial to Palestinians. Obviously, there's going to be yeah. a lot of headaches that have to be overcome. There are still going to be some terror attacks. Busts are going to get attacked. Uh, Israel can't over respond to every fucking thing. It's important I to yeah. recognize that there's terror attacks on both sides, dude. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there are settlers that just go in and can kill Palestinians all the time. You know what I mean? So, like, that 
needs to stop on both sides. I agree. The Would settler violence. On that? Yeah, obviously. The settler okay. violence needs to okay. stop, okay? But, like, it's different, okay? Like, Israel is clearly given unlimited military power on both ends. Well, we already see what unlimited military power looks like on the Israeli end. It is violence sometimes against settlers. It is violence um, sometimes against people that don't deserve it, or not, not against settlers, from settlers towards other people. Sometimes it's an over-retaliation and attacks. That's what violence looks like when Israel has unlimited power. Given the same military power to Hamas, Israel would be eliminated or it'd be nuclear winter. Uh, given the same military power to the West Bank, probably the same outcome, I don't, right? I don't know if I agree with you on that, but I mean, we can put that aside, I guess. Well, I think um, it, I, I don't know if we can put this out. I think it's pretty important. I think yeah. that Hamas's goal is to fight, fight, fight until they've liberated all of Palestine, with Palestine being the entire area of Israel-Palestine. That's what Hamas I, wants. I don't, like, I mean, first of all, I, I believe in the 60s, they were fine with, like, a two-state solution, but the, the actual, like, quantity of land was just, like, I think it was 80-20, if I remember correctly. Like, they, they wanted to do, like, an 80-20 two-state solution, and Israel wouldn't even go that far you know um i would have to see what that, you're talking about right? in particular because it's 60s i don't think anything yeah. like that was on the table i don't know there wasn't even like a palestinian body to negotiate with at that point right because there was no it was just jordan I, egypt and yeah i will find that and send it your way but i know that there was um and during the 60s war i it, i if I remember correctly, there was like a 80, you know, I don't know. I, this is why I, I want to prepare before we talk about this kind of stuff. But, um, but I mean, it, obviously it wasn't Hamas at the table. Right. So, um, so it almost doesn't even matter, but I think that I, I don't know. I think like, once again, I think it's really difficult to like, try to like know what, when Hamas says liberate Palestine, <laughs> like, in in my mind, and I I mean maybe I'm being fantastical, but it's like I would think that they just like they just want equal rights in Israel. <laughs> like that's and, I mean and Hamas like, I is it's an Islamist jihad party, Sunni extremist party. Like they want like a Sharia law government. They call on all Arab, uh, not Arab, or is it Arab brothers or just Muslim brothers for uh, for jihad against the state of Israel? Like what is the the quote in their charter? Like no tree will a Jew be able to hide behind or whatever? Like. I think things that, like October 7th, I think, show, like, what the, and a lot of the attacks, you know, the, the second intifada as well, well like, yeah, sorry, good. I mean, but, but once again, like, I, a lot of time when we talk about this, like, we talk about those attacks, but there have been a shitload of attacks against pal Palestinian citizens constantly throughout the years. And those just seem like because Israel is the state and the power, like, we recognize their power as authentic or whatever like those things don't are, aren't considered as terror attacks even though they're fucking terrifying and they kill civilians and like the a lot of times like especially with these settlements and stuff the idf backs the settlers and does campaign in like insane levels of aggression i mean uh gavir is like a like he is i, I think gavir is like as close to a Nazi as you could possibly be in politics do you, would you agree with that? I mean, Wait, I think uh, Gavir, who? Uh, Benjamin Gavir. Oh, he, he's um, like, is he as close to, he's, is he a Nazi? Probably not. Is he like a far right radical I, extremist loser? Pro yeah, probably for sure. I mean, I think he, I think he literally, I, I, I'm not, I mean, this could be a speculation, but I imagine you could find a video of him talking about being down to civilians by, you know, like exterminate the civilians. I, He's, I've watched so many interviews with him and stuff mm -hmm. where he's just like outright like calling for genocide. You know what I mean? And this is someone that's in their government. Yeah, he's and the BB, interior you know, minister of defense or some shit. Uh, I think the, yeah. the excuse is going to be given that I think he needs, oh, I'm getting into interior Israeli politics, domestic politics, I might be wrong. But I think the issue is that um, for Netanyahu to form a coalition government, he had to draw on some of the more radical far right parties to do it. And I think Benjamin, uh, Ben uh, Giver was the part of that party. And that was the deal that he made to form that coalition was to keep him as the interior minister right. of defense or whatever, right? Because I mean, yeah, I think, yeah. Totally, yeah. Um, so, yeah, but I agree. That guy's. But, but I agree. There's things, but I'm saying that there's like, yeah. there's, there is a difference. We, we, we can't well, pretend I, that I, it's the we same. recognize the yeah, we recognize the difference because, like, that's how we view, and this is just my opinion, obviously, but when we look at states and state power and, like, how they enact violence, one we recognize as, like, okay, and the other one we recognize as terrorism, you know what I mean? But they, if they have the same code of conduct and they have the same goals, like, if there's someone in Hamas that's like, I want to kill all of the Jews, and if there's someone 
and I, I, uh, I understand Israelis, what you're saying. Uh, I'm gonna go full yeah. like Ben Shapiro racism mode here. Uh, I don't mean to, yeah. but like if we look at the difference between like the way these two groups orient themselves, like there's clearly a different trajectory for both people, right? That like the people in Israel seem to have a thriving country that they're building upon, that they're trying to develop something out of. That like the way that they conduct themselves, if they wanted to settle the Palestinians, they could. If they wanted to just like fucking right. nuke the Gaza Strip, they, they could. But they're not. Hold on, wait, they're not wait, doing wait, that. Wait, 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 wait. Wait. Oh, okay, how can you say they're not doing that? They're killing. Palestinians in numbers that it like is so insanely high. I would say that like just because they're not doing it in like one single swoop doesn't mean that they're not genociding people. If they continue on this rate, I mean, it's going to be that. No, you know what I mean? well, first of all, they it, they won't continue at this rate. And number two, that it won't be that. What, because why? Not, why do you think they won't? Because it won't. We'll rate. see. You can message me back in three months. They're not gonna. It's not gonna be like three hundred thousand Palestinians deaths. It's gonna happen. Okay. However, did you think that it was gonna be this high? going into it like day one did you think holy shit, israel is about to kill thirty thousand civilians in a month well first of all the number is not at thirty thousand. secondly there's no way all of those are civilians um but also uh, what, what, I, what i'm saying is that like you, okay, what i'm sorry, saying is that sorry, like if you reversed the governments here do you think hamas would show reserve or do you think if hamas was the one invading the gaza strip full of jewish people do you think the number would be twenty thousand people dead or do you think it would be five hundred thousand people dead i you know destiny to be honest with you I, you don't have, you don't, I'm you wouldn't, dude. yeah, go ahead. What, go ahead. I personally, man, like, I don't know. You know what I mean? I, I don't know what to say to that because it's like, I literally don't know. I did, I honestly did not think that the response from Israel, I knew it was going to be really bad, but going into it, I did not think it was going to be like this. I mean, they've, they've done more damage than I would have ever imagined this time around. And so, like, if I tell you that I don't think Hamas is going to do that, I, I mean, I don't, I literally don't know. I would certainly hope not, but it's like, I just don't know. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not really, it, it's not a rational th thought. You know, I think like- What is October the, 7th, here's a question. What's the largest event? number of, of people, th this is a, I'm not trying to get you, I don't even know the answer to this, but like, what do you think no, is the largest fine, yeah. number of people killed by Israel in a single day is so far? Uh, well, I, I believe yesterday there was like a number of like 700 or something. Okay, so and I, with, I know that during go ahead. with all the world's military might and prowess, with all the capabilities mm -hmm. that Israel possesses in a single day with aircraft, with with surface to surface missiles, with military tanks, actually everything, they killed 700 people. Okay, Hamas well, wait, wait, with wait, wait, infinitely wait. less I mean, military capacity killed 1200 in one day. Why would we why are we pretending that Hamas would show more restraint here I, when that's all they did with guns and in and I think just guns and knives. I don't even know if they use like rocket fire yeah. RPGs or anything when they did the October seventh shit. Like, well, I mean, first of all, and I and I.